fact is that the lack of identity and purpose in your life will make your life most miserable as a teen, as a young person, even as an adult, it's a human thing. In today's video, I want to speak about identity and purpose. And this is the continuation of the series that I tag Teen Struggles. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome. This is your first time watching. I am Owe McBan. I would like you to subscribe to this channel if you have not yet subscribed. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is identity formation. Every human being growing up grapples with the issues of identity. And the question of identity is, who are you? Or if you ask yourself from a personal place, who am I? And when somebody asks you, who are you? The first thing you think is, I am OM, I am Joy, I am Kenneth, I am Franklin. That's the name that was given to you. And you tell people, this is who I am. However, do you really know who you are? Do you really know what you are made of? What are your belief system? What are your values? What are your characteristics? What is your perception or your perspective about life? Because when somebody asks you, who are you? These are the things to consider. What do you believe? What are your values? What are your characteristics? And all of these are a little too much for a teen to know all. That is why you are in a transition. That is why you are trying to discover yourself. That is why you are trying to discover who you really are. And in this stage of going through a transition as a teen, there will be so many influence on your identity from your peer groups, which will make you want to conform to your favorite peer pressure, which is your favorite peers, the people that you like, the people whom you admire amongst your peers, the aspect of your family dynamics, your background, all of that has influence on your identity, trying to shape who you are, trying to shape who you think you are if you don't really know who you are. And in this identity formation, it is pertinent for you to get to really know who am I, what are my values, what are my characteristics, and what is my perception about life, what am I to believe about life. So these are very important things. I would like to say this because you might feel like, is this just a thing that when I grow out of being a teen and become an adult, it will stop? No, it's a human thing. Every teen, like I said, is on transition from a child to becoming an adult. You're being introduced to your world. And coming to know your world, it is a problem that or an issue that every human being gets to experience or face. If you don't deal with it and get to know your identity as a teen, it will affect your decisions. It will affect everything about your life and your future at large if case not taken. So that is why it is very important to sit back and think about your identity and get to know who you really are so that that will define how you see life how you view life, how you get to do things as you are growing. So to make this make sense, what is your identity? Now, the culture that we live in will try to put a label on you, trying to tell you who you should be, trying to tell you what you should align to. And I know there are people that you see already on social media in real life, which you admire. And the truth is, it is okay to admire people. It is okay to, to see good things that people do and like and want to learn that the one thing i would advise you not to do is not to copy anybody do not copy instead of copying learn there are two different things there's a difference between learning something and copying something copying something means you are just duplicating exactly the same thing and as a human being you are not exactly the same as another person you have your own uniqueness as much as there are similarities amongst us as humans in behavior and all those things, which you could talk about the star signs, I'm a Gemini or Gemini, how do you call it? Or you're a Capio, whatever it is, those things could look real to you at the moment because there are similarities of those descriptions to your characteristics as a human being. But that does not mean they define you totally. Neither does not mean you should stock your mind and take that as your definition. Because that would be like you are just copying, oh, since Gemini, Gemini, uh, social people, they are like this, so that is who I am. No, it is not everybody that were born in that period of the year that are social. It just happens to be that majority of them are. So what am I trying to say? Whatever level the culture tries to put on you, you should learn not to accept labels. 
and i know this is your formative years as a teen or as a young person watching and it could feel like these labels looks good because there are some labels that actually look good like the label the culture is trying to portray on the media that looks good of what a teen should do and what a teen should not do you know the freedom to have sex and explore and do all those things and then they act this thing in shows and movies and they portray these true ideas and what is happening there is so much information there is so much things that sounds true and sounds good but they are not the truth about your identity so that is to say whatever label the culture is trying to put on you or whoever you're looking at as a mentor as someone that you love or admire them learn from them don't copy them how do you get to learn from this person learning from someone means you get to know about what makes them do this thing what is the perception around why they behave the way they behave what is the, perce the perception around this ideal that this person is living out or this idea it is for you to know i want to learn this i don't just i need to understand the intricate things about this behavioral pattern or these characteristics before i accept to do it instead of copying and just doing it without knowledge which is actually a foolish thing to do so that's why i'm saying don't copy people instead learn and i will give you this analogy every product you get to buy in the market has a label on it and the truth is the label is a description of what is inside the, the bottle or the package and why is it like this the manufacturer is trying to tell you let me give you it of course the package is to attract people to come and see what is inside but then the package should not deceive people such that it tells you so many things that you will get from it and then when you get to test the content it is not good that would be deception that would be hypocrisy in terms of living that kind of life portraying what you are not living what you are not and trying to find identity in that that is not an identity that is just a facade so talking about this analogy a manufacturer manufactures is good knows the content and puts the description of the content on the label but it would be so bad if another person who did not do the content makes a label about that content that does not understand the intricate things that are involved whether it's in kind of like a product a liquid product like a drink this person does not understand what it really entails what this person used to make this product but it's making a label on it and trying to describe it and that's what the culture is trying to do with you the culture do not make you everybody in the world adults and all are still trying to figure out themselves we are in a process we are all trying to figure out life nobody has mastered life the truth of the matter is that god made you not the culture not this world and scripture says in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 when god told jeremiah before i shaped you in the womb i knew all about you before you saw the light of the day i had holy plans for you god is saying before you were even formed i already knew you so if you knew me before i was formed if you knew everything about me before i came to be who should i refer to concerning my identity now you see why it's important that you should not just listen to copy people to look at people but it's important to go to the manufacturer so that your true description and prescription for life could be gotten it can be gotten outside of him that is the reason you need to be acquainted with this god that is why you need to have a relationship with god not do this religious act of going to church and all of this it is good to go to church it is good to fast it is good to pray but let it not be a religious act let it be that you have a relationship with god because that is when you find your true identity david said in psalm 139 you even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place carefully skillfully you shaped me from nothing to something you saw who you created me to be before i became me before i'd ever seen the light of the day the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book so this is me telling you god created you and he is the content creator 
he knows what content is inside of you from your potentials your skills your gifts he is the one that put them all in there for a specific purpose and this is me telling you if you don't get to know your identity you will not work truly in your purpose your identity and your purpose are interwoven they are intertwined they have a codependency on each other god who made you knows the best practices for you to be preserved and sustained in this world he knows the best practices for you to live a fulfilled life just like a manufacturer would write on the package of his manufactured good store in a cold dry place which is telling you the way to preserve this thing and how to do and that is how it is with god all of god's commands concerning your life or for your life is for your good of his precepts and his word to you is to keep you in the right track to give you the right values to give you the right attributes to give you the right virtues to carry now let's go to the next point under this identity formation the search for validation in finding identity a lot of people are in search for validation for acceptance for approval for affirmation from people and that is why we try to we tend to believe that i need to do something to be accepted i need to do something to be affirmed to be approved so i need to join a certain pa group and it looks like being influenced by the wrong peers and joining them to be approved to be affirmed or to be accepted or doing the wrong thing following people to do the wrong thing just so that they will approve of you and all of those things seeking validation and i know these are mindsets that are built in through our living as children growing up i would say this in the area of academics there's so much academic pressure that there are some things that have been passed down as a mindset through our academics because you feel like you have to get high grades and do well in school which is an institution for you to be able to be a bright person in life i'm careful to say this it is not everybody that will be bright in school in academics it is not everybody that would be perfect or become the first in academics that is why everybody cannot take first and based on this we try to define people which is teachers and parents try to define their children through their academic grades it is good to get good academic grades it is good to do well in school it is a pride to parents but then that should not be a thing that a child is being bashed and condemned for not doing so well that should be a thing to discover who are they validate them because they don't need to do anything to be who they were made to be to have their identity but when you start criticizing and destroying them their reputation you make them not even be able to find who they are because it might be in your experience you're trying to perform well in school so that your parents will validate and approve of you because maybe they have said oh you want a bicycle you want a ball you want to get this when you have when you take the first position in school i'm going to buy that for you and they, they start putting this becomes a mindset because they start putting things on pedestal when you get this i will do this for you and you could come to life thinking that that is how god sees you because you feel like you need to do a certain thing for you to be accepted generally horizontally in the world people want you to do things so that they can celebrate you but god doesn't wait for you to do things before he celebrates you because he sees who you are from within he sees through everything he knew you before he made you and he's the only one you should confer to when it comes to your approval and validation he is the only one you should confer to when it comes to your affirmation in life and acceptance because if you want people to accept you if you are looking out to this world to be accepted you will be disappointed because the moment they accept you one moment they clap for you one moment they validate you the next moment you make a mistake they will throw you away that is why in ignorance a lot of young people try to seek fame on social media try to get a certain number of followers do whatever they want to do whether it's twerk online and do all sort of things to buy followers just to have an identity because it is a search for validation it is a search for identity posting a picture is a certain picture to grab attention and traction so that people will like and comment oh beautiful oh you look good 
all those compliments are good but compliments should not become validation to you so all of this is saying once you find your true identity you will not be looking for validation acceptance affirmation and approval from people instead you know where to find your validation which is true god now in my experience going through school i had the privilege of you know being at the top of the class in my secondary education and it was a thing that the, the day i took sixth position the, the way my teacher spoke to me got me feeling so bad about myself i felt so bad but at some point yeah i'm, I'm kind of like not careless but sometimes i might play a little bit so when i considered what about the person that took the last position in class did they die then me i only took six i've been taking first I, I found my own way of brushing it off. But did it mean that mindset was not there? It has fixated a mindset in me. I have to perform well to be accepted. I have to perform well. I have to not make any mistake. But in life, you, you, you make a mistake. And it is just that everybody does not come out and tell other people their mistakes. That is why it feels like they never make any mistake. Parents don't tell their children their mistake. That is why it feels like they have been perfect all their life. And now the children feel like they are the imperfect ones and something is wrong with them. Nothing is wrong with you. I want you to hear me say this. Nothing is wrong with you. You are good. God made you good. He saw you were good before he brought you forth. He knows you by name. Now I would like you to learn from Jesus. Because when Jesus came to earth, he was portraying the picture of being the true man. And the scripture says that after he was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. Let me read that scripture. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now note that Jesus did not do a single miracle before now. And the father approved of him, validated him, accepted him. This is the picture I want you to get. You are already accepted by God. You're already validated by God. You're already affirmed by God. You're already approved by Him. And He's the only one you need His approval. Coming to your world, they're going to tell you you're a small boy. If you're, if you're a big guy, you'll be smoking. You know, you'll be taking weed with us. You'll be sleeping around. You're a boy. That's why you're not sleeping around. No, you're not a boy because you're not sleeping around. You're not a boy because you've not had sex. You are actually a real man because the picture of a real man is a disciplined man. He's a man that has self-control. He's a man that doesn't want to sell himself cheap like a piece of bread. They could tell you you are not a real woman because you're not as sexy as you're still a virgin. Why should you be? Oh, they're going to tell you things. The culture is counter the word. Oh, you don't have a boyfriend. You're missing out. Oh, you don't have this. You don't have that. And then you tend to feel to yourself. I need to become famous, I need to become rich, I need to look a certain way for me to be accepted. I need to be a certain way for people to see me. No, you don't need any of that. Do you really need the approval? No, you have God's approval. That doesn't mean you don't live right with people. That doesn't mean you don't have integrity and reputation. All you need is once you know your true identity, you can have integrity. You have good reputation. You are God's beloved son and daughter. And do not miss this. Do not forget this. Keep this in your heart. The quest for purpose. The quest for purpose is something that everybody yearns to know. Every human being. And then it is you are at the height of it being a teen. Because you are just coming up to discover your world. You are just coming up to discover life. Now you are asking yourself, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Now you grow up and people keep telling you, Oh, who do you want to become in the future? And you'd be like, I want to become a pilot. I want to become a doctor. I want to become this. I want to become that. But I will tell you, that is choosing a career path. That is not a purpose. The fact that you told yourself that's what you want to become doesn't mean that that is your purpose. You could have inclinations and reasons why you want to become that. Or maybe your parents push you into some of those areas or, you know, have those professional courses, doctor, lawyer, whatever. But all you need to know that your purpose is not tied to a job. Your purpose is not tied to a career. Your purpose is something that God had designed and planned for you to do in life such that you could be fulfilled. And then 
let me not be vague about this the scripture says that the whole duty of man is to fear god and keep his commandments so the true purpose of man in life is actually to reverence god which is worship god fear god and the best way for you to reverence and worship god is for you to live in purpose which is use all the gifts that he has put inside of you all the talent that he has put inside of you and be of good to your world be of value to your world impacts people one of the commandments of god that you are supposed to keep is love your neighbor as you do yourself so when you are of value to your neighbor through your gift through your talent through whatever means or whatever you have you are fulfilling purpose because you are reverencing god you're honoring god by being of good to your neighbor to another person by treating people right by honoring people by being a blessing you are working in purpose that is why in any profession you want to get into whether you want to be a pilot you want to be a doctor you want to be an engineer you want to be a lawyer all of that should come from the foundation of knowing your purpose your identity and knowing that my purpose is to use this channel to the aspect of referencing god and then being of good to people loving my neighbor and obeying all of god's command on how i should live in my world you could choose a career for a paycheck but then if you have at the core of your heart the purpose that you were called to live this life you walk into your purpose and using your career to channel your heart to do things the right way honor people and help people and if god calls you which is purpose is different from a calling if god calls you to become maybe go to ministry prison ministry preaching or whatsoever ministry that is god's calling on your life you should embrace it if god calls you to a certain place maybe even to become a civil servant god can call people to become a civil servant but he needs you to have your purpose in mind when god says i have a plan for you you should know his plans for you he made you you know i went to chat gpt and asked chat gpt what is the purpose of a car what is the purpose of a motorcycle what is the purpose of a bicycle and it gave me the purposes of those things now who told the purpose of these things it was a manufacturer when the person was making it he had the purpose in mind that this car is to help people for personal transportation this motorcycle is to help people for personal transportation this bicycle is to help for personal transportation though there are other uses people use it now for sports they use it for recreational activities and all of that but the primary purpose is for personal transportation now there are so many different ways to function in your purpose of fearing god which is reverencing god and keeping his commandments there are so many ways if god calls you and gives you a voice which is your gift and your potential is the package that you come through in expressing those purposes that god has placed in you if god has given you the gift of songwriting and you write songs that inspires people that helps people makes people dance makes people feel good you are working in purpose in that area and it's just for you to know you should honor god through those means if god calls you to singing and he gives you a voice he uses it to honor him and bless people because there are voices you would hear and it gives you chills and goosebumps and it calms you and it is a gift of god if god calls you to creativity to making technology and it's being of help to people then go ahead and do it whichever line god is calling you to he wants you to know you should have your purpose in mind which is it's to reverence god and keep his commandments and i need you to know this that personal achievement is different from purpose whatever you would achieve to buy the car and build the house and do all you can do those are your personal achievements but your purpose is you living a life that is honoring god and helpful to people most importantly in this world and you would see that in the aspect of you knowing like physically when you bless people when you do something that helps people and they tell you thank you you feel fulfilled there's a sense of fulfillment to feel when you do something that you know genuinely you did it and people are, you make people happy you feel this sense of fulfillment inside of you that is telling you you've worked in purpose somebody was sad 
and you went up to them, you lighten up their mood. You fucked in purpose. Somebody was in a down place getting depressed and all of that. And you as a therapist, you are able to lift them from a place of depression to a place of coming back to life. You have worked in purpose. You've kept God's command. You've reverenced God. That's what he called you to. You are in your office. You are able to help people solve their problems. You've worked in purpose. Daniel worked in purpose in Babylon and he was able to solve problems. He was a problem solver. He had the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of excellence as it is mentioned there. And today, you have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you. You can work in purpose. You just need to know that whatever you get to touch to do, you should do it with a sense of purpose in mind. Scripture says in Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That is all that matters. God has called us to things, to do things. Like he said to Jeremiah, I have ordained you, I have appointed you from the womb to be a prophet. So in this area, you need to come to a place of getting acquainted with God, with your identity in him. That is how your purpose will be revealed. By the time you get to God and know your identity, you will know your prescription for life. You will get to know this is where I'm supposed to go into. This is the line I'm supposed to go into. This is the line of ministry I'm supposed to walk into. Like I wasn't always aware of the fact that I need to create content. Neither was I aware of the fact that I have communication skills. But I knew that I used to talk a lot. And I loved good conversations. And then I would, I knew that because I would always have an opinion to share when people are talking, when we are talking in groups. So God put this gift in me, but it would have been abused if I just used it to talk anyhow. Because I would be able to, you know, study and get information and I would just talk anyhow, be a talkative or gossip. Because some people have communication skills and then they are gossipers. Because the devil always tries to pervert what God has put inside of you. Some people have attraction, like, like the skill of bringing people together. And it could, it could be portrayed in the form of they attract people. They, they, they have an attractive life. People come to them. Maybe as a woman, you're beautiful and your attraction draws people to you. But if you don't build value in you and sharpen your skills so that if it draws men to you, what are you doing with that opportunity? It's an opportunity. What are you doing with it? Oh, it's an opportunity to get money for you. It's an opportunity to sleep with them. Oh, because you are a fine girl. No, that's not it. You are a fine girl and God made you to be that beautiful so that you can draw them in and maybe you have something of value that he put in you which you only need to discover so that you can start working in purpose when they come to you and you show them how to treat a woman. You teach them. That you don't treat a woman like an object. Yeah, I know I'm beautiful. You look at my beauty and I'm good looking. But you don't treat women like objects. You could be the one to teach them. And whichever line of purpose that God has put in you, you just need to discover it and work in it. Sharpen your skills. Sharpen your talents. And work in your purpose. And I hope this video is beneficial to you. I hope you pick something valuable from it. Let me know in the comment section the things you pick from it. When you like this video, you are helping this video spread to other people to watch and you are helping this channel to grow. So do well to give this video a thumbs up and share this video to other people. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Stay blessed. See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.